Welcome back to page 121. I got a little pre-recorded thing I'm going to load in. It's going to tell us all about uh, Jumps Point, the uh, con that's coming up in November, on November 6th. So I'll let that uh, speak to itself. I'm having a little technical difficulty in bringing up the Jump Point logo. I'm not sure why. But on to today's uh, topic. Aliens of Charted Space. Come on. Volume 3. This is my first one. I haven't bought volumes one and two. That's part of the old arrogance of, oh, I've got the old stuff. Why do I need the new stuff? Wow, was I favorably impressed with what I read in here. I will definitely be picking up the other two. This is only out on PDF right now. I picked it up last week. That when it, it came out September 30th. So I grabbed it then. Uh, I've been reading a lot of it. <laughs> I like it. We're going to take a look at it. There's one peculiarity in here that I'm going to kind of point out as we go. Not a criticism or anything, just something a little... Now, head scratching. Uh, could be coincidence, could have been intentional, I'm not sure. So we're going to take a look today at Aliens of Charted Space, Volume 3, from uh, from uh, Mongoose Traveler for 2nd Edition, uh, newly released about a week, week and a half ago. Today on page 121. Just a quick shout out to remind you that Jump Point is coming November 6, 2022. It's getting closer and closer. And we're going to be playing Games Plus in Mount Prospect, Illinois from 11 a.m., to 6 p.m. We're going to be running a couple of Traveler games, have a few Traveler events, Talk Traveler, Everything Traveler, and this includes Cepheus and Clement Sector. If you want to GM, go ahead and private message me on any of the uh, sites that I've posted this on, and I'll get it. I'll attach a link below for Jump Point for their uh, Facebook page. You can also private message me there. So I hope to see you there at Jump Point in Mount Prospect. Aliens of Charted Space, Volume 3. I really enjoyed this uh, this book. This was a fun read. The peculiarity about it is the four, the five races that are brought up in here, which are the uh, Darians, the Gen Geoni, uplift Uplifted Dolphins, Uplifted Orcas, and the Boaps. What's peculiar is four of the five of those are of Terran origin. That'd be everybody but the Booaps actually came from Terra in one form or another. Dolphins were uplifted by the ancients and again by humanity at different points in history. And then the Orcas were uplifted by humans. And then, of course, the Geoni are a human race that was transplanted by the ancients, as are the Darians. So kind of interesting that four of the five alien races in this were actually from Terra. Didn't take away from my enjoyment of the book. Just a curious uh, coincidence. I'm not sure if it was intentional on the part of the uh, publishers or not, uh, but still kind of cool. So anyway, Aliens of Charted Space. The first one we got to look at, oh, this is written uh, by, I got to angle it because so I can read it easier, Darren Balmer. This is my first time reading this gentleman's writing, and I have to say it, it reads very well. It's uh, It has a nice flow to it. Uh, I like that the chapter to chapter, each look at the races is set up the exact same way. You'll see it as we go through the book a little bit. By the way, if you're going to buy this book and don't want to have spoilers, turn off the TV now or to go to another video because there are going to be spoilers as such. I mean, I'm just going to show an overview of an excellent product. There's no real spoilers per se in here. So we get the introduction of uh, uh, taking a look at each of the races. That's a nice looking Darian uh, picture. I like that a lot. And then we get a look at the Darians. I've always enjoyed the Darians. Uh, I've been aware of the Darians pretty much as long as, well, as long as I've been game mastering Traveler, I should say. The book and the Darians came out, I think, in 84. Uh, we had had little drops here and there about the Darians prior to that. But the, the book in 84 was, 84 might even be 85, the uh, old book, was the first real look we had at them. And honestly, I always thought the Darians showed Traveler's origins uh, in from guys who played D&D. &D. In other words, the guys who developed this game played D&D, &D, got excited about role-playing through D&D, &D, and developed elves in space. Yes, that's what Darian's are. I'm going to go back to this picture. If you look at this young woman's ear right there, she's got the pointy ears. Darians live in harmony with nature. They, they Their uh, society started up in orchards, living amongst the trees, very much elves in space. I have no problem with that. I think it's kind of neat, and it's not as obvious now. So if you're a newer Traveler player, you're probably saying, oh, this guy doesn't know what he's talking about. But if you were around 
way back when in the early 80s early to mid 80s you know exactly what i'm talking about a lot of the stuff from early traveler reads and feels like early D D, and that's not a problem that's one of the things that attracted me to traveler in the first place so here we get a good look at uh darian's in in overview so we get a look at them their physiology their lifespan i'm not going to go into a ton of detail on each of the races in here i just want to look at the book more than anything else we get a look at their diet their society their family the darians are very much in harmony with nature uh equality of the sexes is just a given it's not even anything they think about uh and community is very important to the point that one of their main things uh to punish people is to basically ostracize them from the society for a period of time if they've learned their lesson they can come in after the time is expired if they don't learn their lesson they stay out for good and if they don't make it oh well too bad uh, we also learn about darian stoicism it's believed that you know if you have a problem you put your head down and you, you hunker down and you get it done which uh again a lot of this is elven feel there we are the darian space uh the ministry of finance they have the five different chunks of their uh government they are the ministry of finance the ministry of trade ministry of information ministry of defense and ministry of confederation appeals and then there's a confederation council all the planetary bodies send a representative to that law is pretty straightforward don't commit any crimes you won't have a problem they don't have a ton of police because most darians are raised to be respectful of other so fine beings and to get along in a society and as i said if you don't get along then you get ostracized darian exile exile can be for something like antisocial behavior just being disruptive they could say you know what you're out for a week and when we say you're out for a week we mean you're out of the building you don't have food you don't have clothing you don't have shelter you don't have access to money most people will not even interact with you some kind souls might give you a little bit of money uh, might give you some food, might give you shelter, and they are allowed to, but it's not generally something that Darian will do. And if after that week or so you haven't learned your lesson that, hey, you need society and there are certain ways you have to behave, they extend it. And if it continues on, they just say the heck with you. You're no longer in Darian society and they throw you out. You can then leave their space or just stay on the planet and struggle through or eventually perish. Pretty interesting. Uh, social services, uh, employment, welfare, health care. All pretty universal welfare you're expected to be on it until you're such time as you're not it, don't have to be on it and then you're supposed to become productive the darians are very excited about art architecture learning any kind of science uh and you are expected to support your society by supporting those various sciences and learning what you can you're expected to learn all your life there's an example of excellent artwork darian fire sculptures where they use gravatic stresses to hold the fire in place and then it dances as a, a piece of art so recreation for darian recreation is learning something new and then business they're pretty straightforward the military they can be really nasty and one thing i liked about this is we go through each of these races we get the same structure for the chapters i like it we get what their naval organization is naval tactics the guard guard tactics kind of their marines special arm organization they're the ones that oversee the star trigger the star trigger in darian culture the star trigger i'll get to that in a moment we're going to be going to history in just just a minute and then we take a look at the aslan in the confederation the aslan and the darians have a close alliance many aslan have come over and lived in darian space and become more and more darian than aslan uh, they still are a little confused about females having positions of authority which they uh well not authority but outside the cl the clan uh they don't have that in aslan society the clan is everything the females run the clan but hey what the heck now we have darian history and talks about how they grew up in the orchards orchards and these are large areas they, they were transplanted by the ancients and they were brought down to this planet and the planet was broken up into various valleys with high surrounding mountains and each valley had uh fresh water and had large trees the orchards and the Darians were able to thrive there, um, and the ancients cared for them. They don't really know, no one knows why the Darians were brought here, what the ancients had in mind, but they did care for the Darians until such time as the final war, and no longer uh, had any ancients on the scenes. The Darians had to fend for themselves, but they did pretty well. 
uh, and each of these uh, little valleys is called basin. And then we get the rise of the basins, and they, uh, we get an empire that came up, and then the coming of the Salamani. When they met the men from Sal, their tech level was around three. The Salamani fleeing the long night, uh, or actually the, uh, the rule of man, uh, they're uh, fleeing as it's collapsing. The Salamani bring in te technology. The Darians adapted immediately, improve on it. The Salamani did not come as sky gods to wow the uh, lower tech culture so much as partners to uplift them and make a better life for all. They were accepted in Darian society. I think that's pretty cool. And then they, the Darians surged from tech level 3 to tech level 10 within 100 years. Then we go to the Golden Age. The Golden Age starts seeing a little bit of arrogance. They start expanding uh, and experimenting more and more, and they decide they're going to experiment with their son. Their son seems a little strange, so they're going to experiment. And they send a probe into their son, and the first one doesn't do much of anything, so they send a deeper probe, and the deeper probe triggers a massive electromagnetic pulse that spreads throughout there in space at the speed of light, a little, little below the speed of light, and uh, hits the home world and fries all the electronics, and that's followed by a solar flare that literally cooks the, the home world just about destroying everybody on it. Uh, and then the, the EMP goes through Darien space over time and is strong enough when it reaches other subsector or uh, other systems that it still disrupts it. And Darien society basically collapses relatively overnight within uh, the immediate uh, vicinity of the sun happens, happens within hours. And then within the next year or two, everything surrounding also gets affected. Then it's called the Magis. And the Magis is the basis for the Star Trigger. What is the Star Trigger? The Star Trigger is a device the Darians can use to trigger a catastrophic flare from your sun. So if you tick them off, they won't fight you in a conventional sense. They'll go ahead and they'll blow up your sun. They'll take out your whole system. They'll use the Star Trigger. And that's what the special arm is in charge of. They monitor and care for the Star Trigger. We're going to keep going a little bit more as we talk about the Magis, which is the disaster that was caused by the sun probe, and uh, we're going to talk about the star trigger a little more in a, in a minute. So we have the nighttime, which is when their the culture is pretty much gutted, and then the rebuilding, and then by the time they get back into space, they find they have neighbors in the sword worlds. The sword worlds, I love the sword worlds. I'm, I'm going to have to pick up Mongoose's treat, uh, treatment of them. I have their first edition uh, treatment of the sword worlders, and it's pretty good, but the second edition one looks like it's going to add a little bit more to it. So I've got to pick that up one of these days. I'm in the Spinward Marches. I have to know about the Sword World. Plus, I love them. And then they meet the Sword Worlds. They meet the Zodani, and they meet the Third Imperium. The Spinward Marches have expanded while the Zodani were going through their, their own long night. And then it talks about the various frontier wars. And here we get the secret of the Star Trigger. Oh, my goodness. The Star Trigger is a bluff. They don't really have it. They've been able to manipulate people over the years to make them think they have it, predicting a flare on a star over here and then bringing representatives there and say, okay, on this day at this time, there's going to be a big flare here. We cause that. And when the flare happens naturally, they say, see, so don't mess with us. And everybody else says, oh my gosh, they have such power. We can't mess with them. So even though the Darians are a small polity and only have a few systems, they are a powerful neighbor and ally. And... The question has been throughout all of Traveler, is the Star Trigger real? In, I believe it was GURPS Traveler, yeah, it was real. They, they had it, and what are you talking about? It was never a bluff. In a rich, classic Traveler, it was definitely a bluff. They didn't have it, and now we're brought back to it in Mongoose Traveler 2nd Edition, where it's a bluff. They, they don't really have it. That's up to you as the Game Master. They can have it or not as you choose. I go back and forth between them. But frankly, it's never been part of a story I've done, so I haven't had to make my decision. So we talk more about recent history. Then we get a nice look at the Darien timeline. And now we get Darien travelers. All the uh, various careers they can pursue. And then we have all their aging, everything like that. And then we go into their actual careers. I like that about this book. I wasn't expecting that. As I said, this is the first one of these I've looked at. I was not expecting careers custom made for the creatures in the book. Entertainer, Envoy, Guard, Merchant, Militia, Navy, 
Scholar. Special Arm, those are the guys with the Star Trigger. And Worker. This is pretty neat. Oh, Wanderer, too, sorry. Well, it's Wanderer after Worker. Hmm. Oh, well. A uh, little alphabetizing issue there. But um, then we get a central supply catalog for Darians. Stuff that is peculiar to their race. So we got to look at some of their vac suits and guard armor. Uh, all kinds of goodies in here. We get to look at their robots, their high-tech society. Uh, arguably tech level 16, which is where they were before the Mag Magis. Tech level 16, arguably getting into 17 when they triggered the star flare that caused the problems. Now they're back. They're uh, tech level 16 society for the most part, which is pretty cool. They embrace robots. Personal augmentation is something they they do have, but it's not really something they're thrilled about. And then, wow, keep doing that. Various weapons, vehicles of the Darians, military grab vehicle, uh, tank, and then high guard of the Darians. We get some Darian vessels. So I was really pleased with this. I was not expecting all these goodies to be sitting in here. I thought it was going to be just a treatise on the history of the Darians. We get all these other goodies, too. Now, we got a little bit of this in the other versions of these books, in earlier versions of Traveler, but it was neat to see it expanded so much by this. So, Accolades Mongoose, you did a great job with this end of it. So, all kinds of nice little things for you to add, a passenger liner. There's all kinds of goodies to add. All right, now we go to the Geonee. Well, if Darien are the elves of space, arguably the Geonee... Humans on a high-gravity world who are shorter, squatter, and stronger are arguably your dwarves. I've always thought that. I don't know if it's intentional or not, but that's what it always felt like to me. So Geoni, it goes through exactly as they did with the Darians, with their physiology, their lifespan, their diet, their society. They are a patriarchal society. The men hold all the power. The women, in many cases, are a little more than property. Uh, their chirpers are a very important aspect of their lives. A man has to lure a chirper to his property. He has to care for it properly. And when the chirper shows itself to him, then he knows he can marry and he's, he's proven trustworthy. Pretty interesting. And then the chirper stays his uh, companion. So we get a lot on the <clears throat> family nomadism. Their, their home world goes through various uh, tumultuous times with all the uh, geological events on the, the planet, so they are used to having to pack up and move. They've created rules for that. Uh, their technical mastery uh, ownership is very important to them. The more you own, he who has dies with the most toys wins, absolutely speaks here. Uh, and then we get a look at their government, the Mirold Council, the Defense Council, and the Law Council, Council the ne Technology Council, Colonization Council, and Finance Council. And then we get a look at the Adrat. The Adrat is the, uh, the retrieval of advanced technology. One thing about the Geoni is that they say, hey, we were the ancients. If you look around at the various ancient ruins, especially by our homeworld, they were made for Geoni. This, we were the ancients. What's wrong with you guys thinking it was somebody else? It was us. And there's a, an institutional arrogance to the Geoni because they are the true ancients. Uh, they've never accepted the fact that they are actually a minor race because they uh, created their jump drive by reverse technology, reverse engineering, one that they had found from the ancients. So I, I think that's a pretty ni nice aspect of their character. So you can have a very arrogant dwarven type character, so not more nice artwork. Uh, and when I say dwarven, I'm not talking about the AD&D dwarf wandering around, grumbling all the time with the massive beard with jewels and stuff like that. It's just that their physicality, I always thought, kind of came from, uh, again, a little bit of D&D. So we get to look at their Navy organization, their Army operations, their language, and then we get to look at their history. Again, I'm not going to go into a ton of the history. Each of these seems to be a little shorter than the one previous uh, because of the uh, the Darians are the first, and they go about 100 pages in the book, and then each of these a little shorter after that. Uh, the Lyrnerian, Lir, Lyrnians are a creature that's in Geone space that works with the Geone. I think these guys are pretty cool. We are about to see a set of battle dress for them in a bit. And then we get the, their contact with the Silean, uh, group and then the third Imperium and their place in the third Imperium. 
The Gioni never felt that they should be subject to the Third Imperium because, you know, they're the ancients. Nice artwork there, too. Now we get a nice look at the Gioni timeline. Travelers for this race. And then various careers. Adrat. Gioni Self-Defense Army. Gioni Self-Defense Navy. And the Central Supply Catalog for the Gioni. There we go. There's the Lernian battle dress I was talking about. The combat armor. Traditional armor. Ceremonial armor for Gioni themselves. Robots. They like robots. Why not? Gioni architecture and robot design tends to be short and squat with square lines. Nothing flowing. Uh, very more practical than anything else. Again, likening them to the dwarves. And then we got to look at their weapons. Their vehicles. And then the High Guard, their, their own ships. So again, much more than I was expecting. I did not think, after I read the Darien section, I was not expecting that this section would have more of the same, that it was going to be laid out in the exact same format. Pleasantly surprised. This is completely worth the money. The, the, it's only available on PDF right now. I'll attach a link to it. But this was completely worth uh, the money I spent on it. Uh, I have not bought, I have not put in for the physical book, which I think comes out early next year. Uh, this is one I'm just probably going to end up getting on PDF. But I bought this through Mongoose's site. Now we come to the dolphins. Uplifted dolphins. They were uplifted twice. Once by the ancients. They removed some dolphins from Terra 300,000 years ago and uplifted them in parts of the Spinward Marches. And then more recently, humans uplifted dolphins. Dolphins are kind of hippies. They and That's a, a, a quick way to just cover the whole race, but they live with nature, they're one with nature, they have a communal family. Uh, the matriarchs do most of the deciding, uh, raise the children, that kind of thing. So again, we get a look at their lifespan, their diet, their society, how they belong in clans and pods. They do have outcasts as well. Sometimes an outcast can simply be a dolphin who's lost his family, a la Finding Nemo, and he finds a new family or pod by joining up with other species. So he gets involved with humans and human exploration, and they, he joins with them. Dolphins are very fun-loving. They like to play practical jokes. They like to tell jokes. Not many other races find their jokes hysterical, but the dolphins think they're a laugh riot. They're very gregarious. They very much want to be with other dolphins or, failing that, other creatures. Uh, suckering, a dolphin's natural instinct to go help another dolphin in trouble. And then we go into their beliefs. Dress, art, and architecture. Historians and poets. How they conduct business. Their military language and naming, some more cool artwork, and then Dolphin Travelers. You always want to play a Dolphin Traveler? Here's your chance. Now, this book had a lot, uh, this this part and the Orca part, there was a lot in Clement's sector on their uplifts that was similar. So you could actually draw from that book and from this book into whichever system you're playing. So if you're playing Clement's sector, use their book plus this, or vice versa. If you're playing Traveler, you can do it here. And this, by the way, as in most Mongoose Traveler stuff, you could easily put this into uh, Classic Traveler, even Mega Traveler, uh, Mark Miller's Traveler, Traveler Fifth. There's a lot of different places you can put it. So here we get the different careers that are available to them. And their central supply catalog. Which is pretty neat. I like Waldo's, the little mechanical arms they wear. I thought those were neat. I first encountered those in... Traveler back in the early 80s, and I always thought that was a cool idea. And they use mostly sonic weapons because they're underwater. The sonic travels farther and does more damage. Their various vehicles. Sailfish sea scooter. Submersible tank. And then high guard for dolphins. Yes, they have dolphins in space. They have ships. They're not filled with water, but they're kept extremely humid. Humans can survive here. You're just going to be changing your underwear a lot. So, we go to the various ships. Go to the various ships. There we go. We'll let it catch up a little bit. And now we're into the orcas. The orcas are a little different. They're not as friendly and, and gregarious as the dolphins. But their section reads very similarly because they were brought up by Genesis, which is the Earth-based... Uh, Corporation that uplifted both dolphins for Earth dolphins and uh, uplifted the orca. The orca are, they can be kind of mean, 
But if you know Orca in the real world, they, they, they follow very similar paths here. They are intelligent. They are somewhat aloof. They like to be more with other Orcas than other races. Uh, and then more about their dress art and architecture, how they conduct business, the military, a lot about the Orca home world because they actually were uh, uplifted on a different world, not on Terra. Uh, they were brought to the other world and then uplifted. So this is actually their home world. And there are Orca in a few places in Chartered Space. Uh, Gateway Sector has some. Uh, Sufrin is where their uh, their home planet is. And it, it's kind of interesting. Uh, we go through their government, their law level, their military, the economy, more about their culture, urbanization, places and events. This is actually a nice, nice little section. I like the places. And then little critters. I love traveler critters. So we get some in here. We get some in the BWAP system or section as well. So we get some nice critters with a little bit of changes here and there. You can plunk these guys anywhere you want. As long as there's water, I thought they were pretty nice. Now how to be an orca traveler. There you go. Philosopher Elder is one occupation you can have. Spirit Singer. And then we go to the Central Supply Catalog for the orca. They use Waldos as well, which is pretty neat. Vehicles, and then we're out. They have no real spacefaring need, or they don't design their own ships. They can travel by Starship, of course. They just don't have their own. And now we come to the Boaps. I love the Boaps. The only truly alien creature in here, uh, not of Terran origin, uh, goes into the Boaps. These are the administrative functionaries, the bureaucrats, that have spread throughout the Third Imperium and most of charted space and are indispensable because they are such sticklers for detail. I like the Boaps a lot. I've used them in a lot of games. They're great to stop your players in their tracks as far as getting their paperwork taken care of. A Boaps is going to make you do it correctly. If you don't do it right, they'll send you back and have you do it again. They really don't care how long it takes. They're sticklers for detail. They're very conservative. Again, we get to look at the dress and art, their cities, their businesses, their military, which is not much. Their history is pretty interesting. Here's a nice glossary of various WAP terms. Good luck pro pro pronouncing those. Their early civilization, the Volani contact. And the Volani actually respected the WAP because they're very conservative, the WAP, as the Volani are. The Volani respected that. And then they saw the administrative value the BWAPs brought to the table, and they were completely hooked. Before you knew it, the BWAPs were in every facet of Volani, uh, the Volani Imperium. So then we go through the Ramshackle Empire, the, the rule of man, the BWAPs were important to that as well, but even they couldn't hold it together. And then we get to the Third Imperium, where we are now, and the BWAPs are just indispensable for most bureaucracies in the Third Imperium. You look around somewhere, there's going to be a BWAP. They are amphibious. Uh, they have to keep their skin moist, so they wear these wet... Uh, there's clothing that helps keep their, their skin moist and helps them to... Uh, they can breathe normal atmosphere, but they like it more humid. Uh, we get a good look at their planet, their native life forms, the imperial nobility. They are, there are nobles in the Imperium who are Boaps. They have a starport. How they govern themselves. Just all kinds of goodies in here. And more critters. Yes, these are critters native to the Boaps homeworld. So we get to a look at a lot of these. There's quite a few. There's two, four, five, six, seven, seven of them. So it's pretty neat. Again, with a little bit of work, you just move these to anywhere you want. And how to be a Boap traveler. You can be what you want to be. And then central supply catalog for Boaps. You They basically follow any standard traveler career path. And then you go to the central supply catalog. I think they are restricted in some of their combat. But pretty much they can do whatever they want. You get the central supply catalog. You get some uh, peculiar powered plate for made for BWAPs. Their electronics. This is the caftan that keeps their skin moist I was talking about. Robots and drones. I like that. Personal augmentation. They have a little bit, but it's more to take care of any kind of uh, injury or deformity than to augment yourself. And then up close and personal, they've got some nasty weapons. Vehicles of the Boaps. And the High Guard of the Boaps. They have their own interstellar culture, so they, they have their own vessels. 
So just, I love anything that gives me traveler ships. You get an abundance of them in this. I was really surprised by that. This being my first one to look at, I'm going to have to go back and get one and two. If they're all set up like this, wow, am I in. So here we go. Going through the rest of their ships. We're nearly done. They have a lot of ships for the Boaps in here. The Boaps and the Darien definitely got the most attention in this, and they deserved it. Uh, I like both those races quite a bit. I've used both those races quite a bit in my various games. I don't ever remember using the Geone. Nothing against them. I just don't remember ever using them. Uh, and I haven't used any uplifts yet. And then we have, of course, a necessity for any book like this, a fine index, and there's the back cover. So all in all, accolades on this one. I think it was very well done, uh, well written. Uh, typo here and there, nothing that would stop my enjoyment of it. Uh, artwork really sets the, the mood. Just sitting down, enjoying this, it was very immersive. I really liked it. Uh, and I'm absolutely going to be using information out of here. And like I say, I've got to go get the others. Volumes 1 and 2 now. So that's it. I hope you like this little look at the brand new book, uh, Aliens of Chartered Space, Volume 3. And um, let me know what you think. Please like, leave comments uh, down below. And any suggestions for anything else you want to take a look at. I still am thinking of going back and looking at the original classic versions of all these alien races. I haven't decided about that yet. I've done two or three already, but not in a while. Uh, let me know what you think about that, if I should go ahead and take a look at the classic ones or just stick with these. So that's all I've got to say today from page 121. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.